When you hear the name Jim Neighbors, it's hard not to think about Goofy Gomer Pyle, who was first seen on The Andy Griffith Show, and then later on was the focus of his own show, Gomer Pyle USMC. In both shows, Gomer wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer, but he was honest, hardworking, and fiercely loyal. In real life, Jim Neighbors exhibited the same traits. This video is about how his loyalty to actor Frank Sutton cost him dearly. However, before I get into all that, let's talk about Gomer Pyle USMC. It was a huge hit for the CBS network. It ran for five seasons in all. By the beginning of the fifth season, Neighbors was getting the itch to do something a little different. He was an extremely talented singer, and he felt like the next thing to do was a musical variety show. As you might guess, the network executives weren't all that pleased. In fact, they were frustrated that Neighbors would want to give up a program like Gomer Pyle USMC that was still doing very well in the ratings for an untested, unproven musical variety show. To that end, Neighbors enlisted the support of Sutton, who said that he felt like he'd played Sarge long enough and he was excited to try something different with Neighbors. Yep, that's right. Neighbors had promised Sutton a recurring role on his new TV show. So with Sutton's support, Gomer Pyle USMC came to an end, and a few months later, the Jim Neighbors Hour premiered on CBS. Sutton, whose strength was comedy, not music, provided support in the comedic sketches in between the musical numbers. To Neighbors and Sutton, it seemed like a formula that just couldn't fail. And for a while, at least, they were right, and everyone was happy, especially Jim and Frank, who got a chance to do more than they ever could have if they'd continued playing Gomer and Sarge. Yep, it truly was a joyous time for these two friends. However, over time, the executives at CBS became frustrated that the ratings for the show, while good, weren't Gomer Pyle good. Because of that, before you could say Shazam, they started to request that Jim incorporate more music and less comedy, or to be even more specific, less Frank Sutton. For whatever reason, there was a feeling that Sutton was out of place on the show, and that bringing in more guest stars to not only sing and dance, but perform in sketches with neighbors, well, they thought that would boost ratings. As time went on, the executives became even more forceful actually requesting that Sutton be fired from the show. Neighbors, remembering the support that his friend had given him, politely declined their request. So the network canceled the show. Despite the fact that it still had solid ratings, the executives at CBS, well, they had had enough. Not just of Jim Neighbors and his fierce loyalty towards Frank, but any of the shows on their network that had ties to rural America. End of the day, Jim Neighbors was still Gomer. Gomer was still from Mayberry, and Gomer wasn't playing ball, so he had to go. Television historians call this moment in time the Rural Purge. In an effort to become more hip, CBS axed many of their hit shows, Mayberry RFD, Petticoat Junction, Beverly Hillbillies, Green Acres, and of course, the Jim Neighbors Hour. I talk more about the Rural Purge in another video. I'll post a link to it at the end of this one. So hold tight, folks. I've got a bit more to cover before I wrap this thing up. On June 28, 1974, Frank Sutton died of an apparent heart attack while preparing to go on stage in Shreveport, Louisiana at the Beverly Dinner Playhouse. Ever the family man, his wife Toby, and his daughter Amanda, they were with him while he was rehearsing. Sadly, his son Joseph was away at college when the tragedy occurred. It's a fact. Frank Sutton had his vices, among them smoking and non-stop coffee drinking. And it seems those vices, along with the stress of making it in the entertainment world, well, they finally caught up with him. From everything that I can tell, Frank was a good man, a loving husband and father, and a loyal friend. Rest in peace, Sarge. Rest in peace. If you're ever in Clarksville, Tennessee, head on down to Franklin Street to get your picture taken with this feller, the eternally exasperated Sergeant Carter. 
Sutton was born in Clarksville, and despite the fact that his family moved away when he was just a kid, he always felt like Clarksville was his hometown. When the statue was unveiled a few years ago, the mayor said that Sutton was always fond of Clarksville and remained true to his relatives and roots in the town. So that's it. Do you remember the Rural Purge? And did you ever watch the Jim Neighbors Hour with Frank Sutton on it? What did you think? Please share your memories in the comments section. And while you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And what the heck? I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thanks for watching.